back in the jungle. Back in the home jungle. So you what, these jungles are no nothing new to me. That's what I grew up running around in this, in this uh, rainforest, learned, teaching myself how to hunt with a bow and arrow when I was a little brat. Trying to escape the misery of that drunken sack of shit in my mom's house. I had to go to every couple weekends. Survived it. And uh, I know there's a lot of people out there with, with a uh, so-called parent that's in their home that they didn't invite into it, and it's not their father or their mother, and they're doing a real shitty job. Well, just so you know, that time will go by quick, and you'll be able to make your own choices and choose to get those people out of your life and do way better than them, all right? Don't be like them. That's the key. Anyway, just kind of reminds me of being back, all the memories of being a kid start flooding in while I'm out ripping around in this familiar forest. Of the West Coast. <clears throat> I guess I'm gonna do it a couple of repeats. Eh? Well, I had I put a few repeats on the channel just to keep it keep it going. Here's like 8,000 new people this last month too. I'm sure they didn't hear them all. But I'll tell you what, I'm gonna do just for this once. I'm gonna jump into July's folder, which I haven't done once yet, and there is hundreds in here. There's ravens and eagles all around me. It's pretty cool. A bunch of bears too. You just take one. Decides to come up behind me walking up the road. I'm sure everybody will let me know it's there, right? <laughs> hey, listen to this. Ohio Grass Man. Hey, man, love the channel. Oh, by the way, I think there's like five teenagers at the house right now. It's chaos. So this is, as well, my little escape in the morning. <clears throat> hey, man, love the channel. This is, not this is not an exceptional story in comparison to some others, but it's true. Please don't use my last name. This is my sister in about 2001. She was driving and I was riding shotgun. It's about 1 a.m. She was in her 20s and I was about 19. We would cruise the back roads of rural Ohio and drink while bullshitting listening to music. On a back road in Dalestown, Ohio, I caught some red eye shine to my right and my sister saw this thing at the exact same time. We were both like, what the F was that? We have seen a large, about 7 foot tall, man-shaped being with red eyes and what appeared to be matted hair that was caked with mud or something. The entire sighting lasted about three seconds as we were driving about 30 miles per hour and then hit the gas when we saw this thing to get the hell out of there. It was just standing by this cornfield to our right. It was like it thought if it stood still that we would not see it. And we probably would have if it not for those red eyes. We didn't smell anything funny. <clears throat> it was warm out and I remember having the windows down. Anyway, thanks for sharing these stories. Thanks, John. Appreciate it, man. And, uh, you know, it might not to you sound like much to you, but it might sound a like a lot to somebody who lives in that exact same area you just mentioned, right? And that's why we got to get it out and share it. And the thing about staying still as being a professionally paid hunter guide, I can assure you it doesn't matter the species if you do not move and the wind's right, nothing sees you. And these things are so large. We've heard numerous accounts of these things not moving, like dead still, like an animal can hold stillness, and people walking right by them thinking it's a stump or a pile of brush, and then it got up and walked away. And that creeps me out because of all the times that I'm out in this bush here, <laughs> I wonder how many times they pulled that up to me because I'm not looking for them. Another thing too is for you to be, uh, to see more, see potentially these beings more, anything else more, take a note, when I'm, <clears throat> when I'm guiding up north, there's so many species in the Rocky Mountains, it's ridiculous, right? Caribou, elk, moose, deer. Uh, mountain sheep, um, caribou, grizzlies, black bears, all sorts of stuff. And when I'm guiding, as an example, for moose, we'll go out for the for a day with my hunter. We'll see predominantly moose, unless something jumps up right in front of us that's a different species. And then maybe a couple of days later, I'll take that same guy, possibly looking for elk. And we'll basically go in the same area, and we're gonna and we predominantly see elk because we're looking for elk. And we don't typically see all those moose that we saw a few days earlier because we're not looking for that big, black, dark brown form. We're looking for the beige elk. So what I'm saying is, um, how, how many of you are looking for a six to eight foot tall stump not moving in the timber when you're hiking and you're walking? Right? Not too many of us. How many of us are looking for a face eight to nine to ten to twelve feet up a tree, a half a face with one eyeball, dead steady on the side of a tree? looking out at you from who knows how far or how close. Not many of us, right? 
but they know that I will guarantee and they capitalize on that and that's we've heard that numerous times people see these things absolutely statue frozen while they're coming to buy until they until they uh, focus on them and then it's over but thanks for sending that in and yet there is one mosquito here tormenting me <laughs> anyway USAF creature story update Steve asked if I knew more about the creature no I do not I had have a lot of respect for the day shift flight chief who questioned me. We both had seen each other in passing on secret squirrel shit. Google it. Much faster to explain. I was getting towards the end of my enlistment and I had zero desire to be briefed on anything more or as bizarre as I had been already. Alaska story. I was driving an old road near the toe of the Root Glacier on Rengel St. Elias, Nathan Park, near McCarthy, Alaska. My friend and I were doing just a little foot photography and a hike and hike in a little, then go back to McCarthy. Suddenly I had the strange feeling inside my head. I knew there was something just over a small hill. I looked at my buddy and said, Bigfoot, without thinking. We both got out of my Toyota pickup and I motioned for him to go into the light glacier scrub, and I walked in about six yards to his left. We were both armed for self defense against bears. A classic Bigfoot stood up almost between us and ran off in heavy cover easily jumping over fallen trees ridiculously fast. I had, I had just a glimpse of its profile before it ran. It looked human, but it had dark brown hair all over with wide shoulders, maybe six feet tall, standing like a man. No, not huge or a bit like I've ever heard on your channel. Just super fast, faster than a grizzly at full board charge or run, or a horse at full gallop. I wasn't scared, but very perplexed at what I was looking at. No fight or flight, but remember, a weird ice cream headache until it was out of sight for a minute or so. My friend was awestruck. He had lived in the area for years and never saw one. We still talk about it. I hope to get back to McCarthy in a few weeks. What I fear in the woods. Moose, black bear, brown bear, other people. Enjoy. All right. Um, I would have to do a little bit of search in the email inbox to find your original email, Joe, but thanks for sending that. The super fast... The super fast speed is what scared a lot of people when they seen these things. Super crazy speed. And, uh, you know, I, I would like to see that myself. I'm very, very curious about that aspect of them for sure. I wouldn't mind seeing that once in this lifetime before it's up. That absolute insane speed. That'd be something else. Rip it along. <clears throat> That's pretty crazy that you sensed it up ahead without seeing it, but uh, a lot of people can sense these things, right? Bigfoot in the rain. Hello, Steve. I live in a safe land, black land, dirt, Texas. But one night something weird happened about 100 miles from my home in Temple. One Saturday, me and my beautiful wife decided to sneak off to Bozier City, LA, for some gambling and together time. A simple one night trip. I was crossing the Sabine River Bridge in deep east Texas. My wife was oh, in L.A., Louisiana. My wife was reading a magazine. It was raining, but light was good about 6 p.m. Saturday around June 1, 2012. I was cruising pretty good, and I was in a Dodge truck full size. Anyway, here it goes. As I was about to cross the bridge there around Carthage, Texas, a figure, pure black, head-pointed, massive chest and a dark face. I could only see the eyes, but he looked at me with pure hate. He stepped over the railing onto the highway. I swerved to scare him back off the road. I was going about 50 miles per hour, but he stood his ground. I pushed the gas down and thought I left him behind, but I looked back in the mirror and the bastard was chasing me and gaining ground. I pushed the gas and left him. I saw him leap off the bridge and run into the woods. He is about 8 feet tall, 500 pounds and evil. I never told anyone, even my wife, who got on me for speeding. I can never get it out of my mind. My name is Ray. Never been an outdoor type, and I know I never will. Keep up the great work. Holy shit, Ray. That is intimidating as hell, and that would mess anybody up for even wanting to go outside after seeing that. I can't explain the hatred. Many people feel they can. Many people are adamant it's, it's biblical, and they are here to kill us. They are here to rise up out of the ground, out of the tunnels, out of the caves and the ground, and when they are allowed to, and wreak absolute havoc on us. Uh, wherever they get that direct information from, 
to be able to directly dictate that to the people. I'd be interested in finding that out. But there's a couple mosquitoes in here in this deep timber. But anyway, I don't know. I don't know what's up with the hate. The hate has been reported so many times. So many people have said the look in this thing's face. I could tell it wanted to kill me, you know. But they don't. I don't know why. But I tell you one thing. Like I said, I remember saying a long time ago, you know, if, if one of these beings felt like it, especially where I live rural, I live rural now, but even like, say, an example, the community I was just living in, I remember thinking, man, if, if one of those things felt like it in the night, it could go house to house solo and annihilate a community. Think about it. would be nothing you could do about it. And that's fairly, uh, it's fairly alarming, right, to know that that is potentially potentially reality probably far-fetched i hope i hope it never ever happens but i'll tell you what if it does if something triggers one day what are you going to do what are you going to do if that triggered one day and i one thing well anyway all right what do we got here here's another one that says follow up Thanks for sending that in, by the way. Appreciate it. And if you hear anything else from anyone else and it's information that you feel can help people, then send it to me, all right? Hello, Steve Bonnie here, the off-grid lady from Quebec. I was a little shaken after your reaction to my brief message about a sabe terrorizing me and my husband last winter. I gave it quite a bit of thought and wanted to fill in the details. We don't hunt, but we love the bush and the solitude of remote cabin life. I'm quite intuitive and occasionally dream of future events. This accompanied with an extreme sensitivity of people's feelings. I'm an artist and my husband is a musician. A few years back, I decided to try to make some money selling firewood. The property is a mixed hardwood forest situated on top of a mountain. Well, this really pissed off the Sabe off, and I really didn't put two and two together until much later. But they were, but they were clearly letting me know their displeasure by snapping huge hardwood oaks and maples about 15 to 20 feet up adjacent to trees we had cut. Presently, the people let me know of their presence with the whoops and tapping and imitating of animal calls. One of the males will even come over by our outdoor campfire to say, hey, occasionally. He hoots like an owl just in the shadows or so, so we cannot see him. It is friendly. We don't feel threatened. We are not a current threat to them. We respect the bent trees and stick and log symbols of do not enter. Every morning when I exit the cabin, the same loud bird call is announced, warning the sabe that I'm up. One very long, loud call. My mother is planning on doing some more logging, and this is a really unnerving, unnerving me. I don't want to be the target of their anger. Anger. Keep up your excellent work, Bonnie. Okay, Bonnie. Straight up honest, I'm kind of just waking up, and I don't quite remember your email, although it's absolutely familiar. But I'll tell you this much: one thing for certain. You know, a lot of people read into emotion, read into signals that these signals may be um, the "do not enter" signs left with sticks or what have you, bent trees, X's, I don't, I don't know. I'm not too concerned about it. This is what I can tell all of you with confidence. Something this big that outclasses us so fiercely, if it does not want you to do something, you're not going to be able to do it. If these beings are absolutely pissed that you're cutting some firewood, they're going to stop you before you cut it. Right? If they do not want you to go up a road or in a trail in a timber, they're not just going to leave a couple of sticks and an X thinking you, you uh, understand what that means to stop you dead in your tracks. They're going to stop you. Right? Um, I know there's going to be a lot of people out there who disagree with me, but if you, if you do not go with the main narrative, what everybody claims is true because so-and-so says it and you mimic what they say, etc., etc., if you think common sense, think about it. It's like when people say we're the keepers of the forest, or the watchers of the keepers, they protect the forest. No, they don't. I've filmed living, I've filmed absolute proof that they do not do that because of the acres and miles and miles of clear cut logging that's gone on, especially where I live today. If they were the quote protectors of the land, that wouldn't have went down, right? I'm just reading, I'm just reading how it reads using common sense. If they do not want a simple little human being to walk up a trail, they aren't going to leave two branches like this in the trail expecting those little people to know exactly what that means and meanwhile people go past there anyways i guess i'm babbling a little bit but i'm just saying is a lot of these peop things that people keep saying and and inserting their own emo emotional feelings possibly i'm not i'm not right 
Who knows if I'm ever right, but I'm just saying my take on it. Something this big that can pull your head off like a freaking dandelion top. If it doesn't want you to go in the forest, it's going to stop your ass. If it doesn't want to cut you, want you to cut firewood, you're not going to be cutting firewood, right? So anyways, all I'm saying is, Bonnie, what I would think, I may not be right, but what I would think is uh, I wouldn't be worried too much about cutting firewood, right? I don't think that's what the, uh, I don't think that's what they're uh, getting at when they're making you aware they are there myself, but who knows? Thanks for sending that in too, Bonnie. All right, appreciate it. And send more in if you find anything that helps the people. Send it in, all right? Or yourself. Good morning, Mr. Isdall. This story and photo was experienced before my brother first introduced me to David Pilatus and his 411 research. From there, my interest expanded to Scott Carpenter, and then my brother introduced me to your videos. I'm a Christian, and I believe in Gen 6. I'm also part First Nation, Osage, 6 foot 4, and a member of the tribe. While they are located in Oklahoma, I live in Florida. I'm not a hunter or avid outdoorsman, though I've done my share of fishing, camping, and hiking in this national, nation's national parks. And it went on to the stories. First experience, Quinault Short Loop in Olympic National Park. I was on a weekend-long vacation with my future wife starting in Seattle and ending in San Francisco. It was December, about a week before Christmas. While on this trail, my wife and I traded leading each other on the path that was wide enough for only one person. At one point, just before the path begins to loop back toward the starting point, my wife is about 10 yards behind me. I suddenly had a strange feeling of being watched. Everything was suddenly incredibly quiet. I stopped, stared into the tree line in the U-shape around me, and first thought was a big cat. Short brush for about 30 yards to the tree line. It looked like a controlled burn or forest fire had occurred several years earlier. I had friends who hunt tell me that when big cats are in the area, it becomes dead silent. I also have experienced this camping in Florida following, followed by panther screams. I then looked behind me and told my wife to get right in front of me. Normally we were laughing and joking on our hikes, but something in my tone wiped the smile from her face and she hurried up to me. Nothing else happened other than turning the loop and heading back towards the truck, other than a sense of relief that I was no longer being watched. I've attached a picture and circled the trail where the feeling occurred. Second experience, Perry Creek, Redwood State Park, Redwood National Park, California. My wife and I pulled off the road to explore the giant redwoods. We ran around the area taking pictures and generally enjoying ourselves. At one point, my wife goes to cross a wooden bridge with a trail leading into the brush and then further a distant tree line. She got to the bridge and I was following when suddenly I stopped again and told her I would not cross the bridge. She laughed and asked what was wrong. I simply said, do not cross to the other side. Come back here. Once again, something in my tone told her that I was serious and she did not argue. I don't usually tell my wife what to do. She asked what was wrong and I was trying to put a lighthearted face on what I was feeling and just told her I didn't like the trail and thought we should leave. She convinced me to take a picture on the bridge. I walked halfway down it and it was very difficult for me to turn my back to that tree line. Note, in the picture you can see I didn't square my back to the woods. I stood at an angle and that angle is toward the thing I'm asking you about in the picture. After this picture we left and felt relieved. Nothing else of note regarding a subject occurred on the rest of the trip. Boring, I know. Fast forward about five years, and I looked at that picture again and noticed something in the upper right of the frame. I've shown my brother, who's an avid follower of you, the 411 and Scott Carpenter, and he sees it too. So I've attached a picture with it, circled, and without it circled. I've also attached a picture of the cover of Mr. Carpenter's book for picture of face comparison. I feel kind of silly, but I'm curious what you make of this. Is it just my imagination? I'm mostly interested in the upper right of the picture, but my wife thinks she sees something on the left as well. If you look down at it unbiasedly and let me know if I was just being overly protective or correctly listening to my sixth sense, I'd greatly appreciate it. Best regards and thank you for the work you do. Lucas. P.S. Discussing this with my brother brought up another memory we had as children. We lived behind roughly 40 acres of woods that connected to Mocha and Tiger Bay State Park area. This is 30 years ago, so the woods has since been built up. Anyway. My brother and I were always in the woods behind our house making trails and chasing rabbits and turkeys. One evening we were headed into the woods around 7 p.m. in the summer, so we still had about two hours of light left. We got only about 100 yards down the trail we made when, we, when my older brother stepped, stopped dead. He was staring at the bush that he said wasn't there before. He turned us around and we began walking back toward the house. As we walked, we heard footsteps, bipedal, slowly following us. 
When we stopped, it would take a step or two and then stop too. It freaked us out. We were about five and seven years old. The start and stop happened several times. Finally, my brother just said, run. He stayed behind me and we bolted for the house and jumped the chain link fence. Our dad was in the yard and came running. My brother told him what we had heard and our dad believed us and spent some time looking into the woods, but he didn't go more than 10 yards from the fence. He didn't hear anything. A few months later, we told the owner of the property that we had, what we had heard, and he simply said, oh, you heard of the big red bear. To my knowledge, there aren't any red bears in Florida. We didn't go into the woods much after that. Anyway, it feels good to get the stories out, even if they just turned out to be overactive imaginations. All right. Um, Luke, absolutely appreciate you sending that in, man, all right? And um, just so everybody knows, including you, Luke, it's like when I get these photographs... I'm not a pho photograph analyst, I'm not an expert, and I definitely was not there with you when you took the picture. I've never walked that trail in my life. So, uh, I do remember those photographs, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to dig them up and add them to this email share once you get back, so now that we've got the internet. But um, for me, these photographs, it's like, if, if, if it isn't with the whites of the eyes looking at that camera, I don't have any interest myself. It just, it doesn't even, I'll glance for a second and I don't really think too much of it, you know, because I have seen these things firsthand with my eyeballs. I know they're here. I know they're here 110%. I know they're here. And uh, that's good enough for me. So for after you've seen them firsthand, you know they're here. You know they're watching you when they're around, when you're in the same zone. Um, seeing a photograph with maybe possibly a little bit of a shape way off in the distance, it, it, it just doesn't do anything for me personally, and I don't think much of it. But I guess getting back to the what to answer your question, I wasn't there, man. I wasn't there, and I've never walked that trail. So, uh, but what I would hope that you would focus on would be, like you said, your sixth sense, your feelings, and keeping yourself safe. You know, there's, um, was there something there? Who knows? Chances are, chances are really high there was. Is it caught in the photograph? I don't know, man. I haven't a clue. You know what? I took a picture the other day of a big bear on the other side of the river just behind me. Big bear. And I posted it up, I think, even on the, I think I even posted it on the community channel. And if you look up above the bear in the green bushes, there's a dark blob there. And you zoom in on it, and it looks exactly like a big peaked head with eyes and cheekbones on it did i did i uh, make mention of it no will i go back down there and take a, a photograph of the same place for shits and giggle, giggles why not because i'm going to go down there anyway and set up some trail cameras along that around that pool for the bears and eagles and stuff but it's not hard it's, it's very very easy to take a photograph especially look where i am right now i'll bet you people are gonna go there's one over your shoulders three over there there's two above you there's five in the tree Right, and you can take a photograph from that camera behind me. Probably take a screenshot and zoom in, and you'll be able to put together faces, face looking, face like shape. I had to delete some old content off that camera. Lucky I could just, I've got the, the view screen facing me, even though the camera is what 15, 15 yards away from me. I can just see the camera's on. I just saw something blink on the screen, and it said it ran out of uh, space, so I had to go delete some. But anyway, get back to photographs. Yeah, I, I, flat out, I'm the wrong guy. I'm the wrong guy to ask what I think about a shape or a form in a photograph when it comes to these beings. I just am. I don't analyze them. I don't look. I don't seek them out. I don't really have that much interest in photographs myself. But that's just me. All right. But there's plenty of people here watching this channel that do have interest and do dissect those photographs, and I'm sure uh, they may um, have a look and, and offer up some kind of opinion in the comment section below, or other people will. Okay. Other than that, um, go with your sixth sense when it comes to this topic, no matter what. When you're out in the woods, all right, especially with family, go with your sixth sense. Don't deny it attention ever. And thanks for sending that in, all right, man? Attention, please read on video. Okie dokie, here we go. Hello, Steve. First, I need to tell you how much I appreciate what you're doing. Being able to get my story out has helped me more than you'll ever know. I've gone from being ridiculed to vindicated to an authority on the myriad of topics this subject bleeds into. My name is Zach from Northern California. I'm the guy who had one of these demons slamming on the outside of my house at night. 
then finally caught it in the floodlights of my front yard, and it turned cloaked like the Predator movie. I also had all the sleep paralysis episodes and the strange disappearance, then equally strange return of a dog. You said many things that I feel need to be brought up. You may not agree with the discussion of the topics again. I will ask you, please understand, I do not write this letter to be annoying. I have zero contempt or malice for you. To be honest, I actually consider you one of the great men of our time. In that, you recently asked us, your audience, where are the great men of today? We found one with you. Oh, holy cow. Okay, thanks for these kind words, man. You're a hero, and I believe there will be folk songs written about you and what you're doing, LOL. I think you're much smarter than you pretend to be sometimes. You say that the true info, you say that the true info about this subject concerning the First Nations and how you said when this info was relayed to white settlers, it was treated like a hoax or silly folklore. When in fact, white settlers heard about these interdimensional spiritual creatures, they knew them to be what they've always known to them be, demons, the sons of the fallen ones. Since you read my story, I've gone on a crash course in the subject. This is what I've learned to be true, and my puzzle is fitting together perfectly. You see, it's my belief that humans are like a petri dish with a sterile culture inside. We are created with a veil between our world and the dimension the demons inhabit. God knew that if we were exposed to the other side, it could make us go insane. Just like anything from outside that sterile culture, only to be contamination. Likewise, anything piercing the veil from another dimension is demonic. But it, extraterrestrials, sabe, spirit guide, or a UFO, or anything else. Simply for the fact that if something from the other side truly cared about you, it would know to stay the F away from any human the way our creator designed, so as to keep our culture sterile and not contaminated, so to speak. It was these interdimensional creatures that caused the great flood with Noah and the Ark, of which every ancient civilization has, has had a flood story, not to mention mainstream modern paleontology and the geology have found a lair or soil strata that shows a global cataclysm in the past. We must remember to always remain diligent. The Bible says that it was in the days of Noah. So too it will be the coming of the days of the Son of Man. Also, Revelation says that in the end times, men will become obsessed with the doctrine of demons. May we never lead our brothers astray in our search for truth and at the round table of knowledge. Like always, take what I've written, what you will, what you will and discard that you don't. Only if it helps your puzzle come into view better. All this I ask in the name of the Creator's only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, Zach, thanks for that share, man. And um, there's many, many thousands of people that'll agree with you 100% on your take of what's going on. And uh, it is kind of odd, you know, people bringing up the demons and the hate and the anger and the tyranny. Got to wonder where it came from and why it's even a piece of this existence, right? Why is there so much frickin' hate, opportunists, and power-munging dirtbags? I don't understand where the, all the hate and the anger comes from. When you think about it, this lifetime is such a frickin' riot. There's so many things to be happy about. There's so many good things about this lifetime. It's absolutely ridiculous. But somewhere along the line, somewhere along the line, somebody had a big hiccup. And power and opportunity came into the mix, and look at where we are now. Now we've got a handful of absolute sleazy, dirty, greasy shitbags annihilating the chance for many people to have an equal, equally um, enjoyable life experience on the face of this planet, all because of the opportunistic, greasy pricks. And I always, I often I wonder, where did that come from, man? Where did it come from? Why does that even exist in our time? It's just frustrating. I don't understand it. Maybe one day I will. But in the meantime, I just have this, I just have this ongoing burning urge to fight it. I can't stand the bad guys. Honest to God, if, if I'm going to feel very angry and more frustrated and pissed off if I die and the bad guys are still winning. It's going to bug me. It bugs me today. And you'll understand more if I share a lot of my story later on, which I'm contemplating. You'll understand my position on bad guys winning. I cannot stand it when the bad guys win. I can't stand it when the opportunist dirtbags hammer on people's lives and annihilate them and get away with it and prosper. I hate it. I want to stop them. Anyway, babbling. Let's get back to one more, all right? All right, what do we got? One more and then I got to rip back. 
my experience. Hello, Steve. You can call me B. I live in Mineral Wells, Texas. This happened to me in June 2017. It was a muggy day. A storm was about to hit, and the clouds were so thick and low you could almost reach up and touch them. I was trying to get to the last of my yard work done before the rain hit. I finished mowing, had to put the mower up, and was stringing up my weed eater when I heard a screech in the distance, loud but far away. I thought, wow, that sounded like someone's watching Jurassic Park with the volume really loud. I didn't think too much about it. Then, maybe 45 seconds to a minute later, I heard a sound like the flap of a giant set of wings with that screech so loud I about pissed myself. I fell to the ground. I thought it was literally on top of me. Staring straight up from the ground, I couldn't see a thing because the clouds were so dark and thick. Scared to death, I just laid there for several seconds, thinking, what in the hell was that? Then I heard it again, but pretty far away that time. I ran into the house and grabbed my girlfriend and brought her out on the porch. I told her what happened, and it scared her to death. We listened for a while, but never heard it again, and I haven't heard it since. The only thing I can think of is the stories of the Thunderbird from South Texas, but I've never heard of them spotted this far north. Never did see it, but I'll never forget that awful sound. Anyway, it's not a Sasquatch story, but I thought share anyway. Thanks, Steve, for all you do. There are things in this world that we just don't understand. Hallelujah to that Many one. things that we don't understand, isn't there? There's been a lot of a lot of people have shared that same experience. A lot. I have no knowledge about it. I got no experience with it. I can't say anything about it myself. I'm sure somebody else in the comments section might be able to tap into it for you. It's pretty bizarre, man. There's a lot of stories of sightings of these massive flying things flying around accompanied with that sound. I don't know what the hell's going on with that department, but, but anyway, I gotta get going. I'm gonna come back and share a lot more later and hopefully read a lot more smoother. I hate it when I screw up reading, but sometimes it's just kinda of hard for me sometimes. But anyway, I gotta go on you guys, so I'll be back. I'm gonna share a lot more. And uh, don't forget, it's sharemystoryathouthunt.com or tellmystoryathouthunt.com. Please don't email me on any other emails, okay, you guys? And uh, be safe out there.